Good day and welcome to the Herbert Denard Show. We have with us Senator Miriam Paris. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Denard. Thank you for it's, having me here. It's just wonderful. You are a senator now. Yes, I am. Who would have thought such a thing? <laughs> I tell you, um, well, evidently the people of uh, District 20, 26 thought so because they showed up at the polls on August the 16th and let their voices be heard. So I'm very proud of that. One of the controversies that was going on around, going around Macon was that you would not debate David. He kept going to forums and wanting you to debate the issues, and you wouldn't debate him. Why? Well, we were very strategic with this race. Uh, we knew that we had a lot of name recognition that we're, we were up against. And so we had to play the game according to our game plan. And it was, I was not going to let anybody else dictate my campaign and how I wanted to run it. That was something that he wanted to do. He had 37 years to say everything he needed to say. And for us, it just was a, it, it, was, it was not a benefit to us. It was only, uh, you know, going to benefit <clears throat> him and his platform. And so I just chose not to. And I chose to run my race the way uh, I saw fit this time. And it was, I think it was a stroke of genius. I mean, you have, you have moved up fast. It, you haven't been in politics that long. You started out uh, in a special election to fill Charles Dudley's seat. Yes. And you served about a year or so, and then you ran again against Willetta Hill and got elected. And then you, uh, once elected, they elected you president of council. And you served one term, not quite a term, and you move on to state senator and run against a person that's a household name in Macon, David Lucas, and you win, not just a little small win, a big win. Who do you attribute to all of that? Well, um, you know, a lot of it, you have to believe in your destiny. Um, I, I could, as I was running for office, especially on this time, I just knew that this was what I was supposed to do. Um, I, I could hear God's voice telling me, you just run. And, and we did that. We stayed very focused because there were a lot of distractions out there for us to answer. Uh, but we stayed very focused on this race. Uh, we worked very hard and I didn't do it by myself. I had, uh, had very good staff and, and had tremendous supporters, uh, had just great support. And you had your dad. And I had my great dad's <laughs> support <laughs> and his name as well. Um, you know, my dad has served his constituency very well for mm -hmm. many years. And, um, you know, a lot of his supporters do support me as well. And I'm very appreciative of that. How does it feel to be a senator? What do you do as a senator? How does it differ from city council? Oh, it's a tremendous difference being at the Capitol versus city hall. Um, you're with a new group of people. Um, I, I really believe it's another level of professionalism, uh, which I really was seeking. Um, we went right into, well, I jumped right into, you know, special session because of re reapportionment and redistricting. And um, it, was, it, it was very exciting. Everyone was very cordial and um, very professional very business-like, you know, a lot of the issues that were, that we were voting on, we did not agree on, uh, and, you know, it was just, um, it was, it was just really an eye-opening experience. What about the real portion? Is that over yet now? Is the session over? The session is over. Uh, we ended on Wednesday um, a week ago, which um, I don't remember the date. But, <clears throat> excuse me, we finished up, and um, right now the, I believe the governor has signed off on the maps, and uh, they have to go for pre-clearance. The Department of Justice has to approve them, mm -hmm. and there we go. But The main thing that you were dealing with during this session was, was uh, reapportionment. Reapportionment and re redistricting, yes. And redistricting. They were drawing the lines, new lines for the state of Georgia, for the um, 
congressional lines. The congressional lines, Senate lines, and House representative lines. All mm -hmm. of those lines were drawn. Did they change dramatically, or are they basically the same? Yes, they have changed very dramatically. Um, the lines were not the way we as Democrats would have wanted to see them. Uh, of course, we would have preferred they stayed the same uh, as, as they were, but um, there was a lot of um, lines drawn where, you know, it diluted some of the, the um, minority. Uh, votership. What, what about your district, the 26? How was that improved or this? Well, uh, District 26 has just about doubled in size. Um, it went from being Macon, East Bibb, all of Twiggs, a majority of Wilkinson, Robbins Air Force Base, and a small um, fringe outside of the base to <clears throat> A little more east, no, a little more west of the city of Macon, all of East Bibb. Jones? A small portion of Jones, all of Twiggs, all of Wilkinson, all of Washington, all of Hancock, and that uh, part of uh, Houston. Okay, so you got a larger district now. Got a larger district, right. More, more. More people to meet, more hands to shake. Okay, and then in in uh, nine months, eight months, something like that, you have to run again. Yes. Are you preparing today for your reelection? Well, you know, every day to me, you're running for reelection. Uh, how you serve your constituency is how you run for reelection. As far as I'm concerned, um, it's not about just you know trying to get back out there in eight or nine months. It's my job to serve the people of District 26 today uh, and what happens and what their voice is eight or nine months from now, you know, that's mine to, to secure right now. Um, the district has quite a few issues that you're, you know, dealing with. I was in Twiggs County uh, a pretty good portion of the day yesterday uh, meeting with some of the elected officials and some of the people there uh, on some of the issues that they're uh, looking at. And uh, that's what I intend to do. I intend to really work the district and let them know that I'm here to represent all of District 26. You know, I heard something in it that could or could not be true, but <clears throat> they are saying, people are saying that when the Rickard, Mayor Rickard runs his next time around, one of the logical person to succeed in would be Miriam Parrish who's been president of the council, that's, uh, it'll be an open race. It, won't, it will not be an incumbent then. And I know this early now, but has that ever crossed your mind? Running for the mayor's office? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I did toy with the idea for a little while. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, before I decided to run for the Senate seat. Um, but the race had really gotten full, and it was just a lot of headliners in there, and, and the mayor's race is a, it, it's That's interesting. interesting. It's, it's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, right now, no, I'm not considering uh, any, any more local positions. Um, I enjoyed serving the people in Macon. Uh, they were very good to me uh, and very supportive of me. And I just would, uh, right now I'm satisfied where I am. The position that you uh, held <clears throat> as president of the council, how much, did that, how much did that pay? It was around 12500 But I thought the president makes a little more, right? Yes. Now, uh, council members make about ten, and the uh, president makes about twelve five. Twelve five. What does this position pay? Uh, you know, Herbert, I have You haven't found out. <laughs> that's, some of the, that's one of the things I've been working on. Uh, they gave me a stack of papers like this that I have to go through because I was just a new senator. They had not gotten around to explaining everything to me on the um, on the, uh, on the I'm fiscal thinking side. it was about 18 or something like that. I, I think that's right, 17, 18, and then uh, with the per diem, it, it kind of goes, goes up, up a little bit from there. So.